Large projects have several components that are dependent on each other. For example, when an upstream library changes, then all the downstream dependencies need to be rebuilt and revalidated. In situations like this, adding a pipeline trigger allows you to run your pipeline upon successful completion of another pipeline. Today, we are going to explore how we can achieve that thanks to the pipeline trigger of Azure Pipelines. And we are also announcing the winner of the recent giveaway, so stay tuned. <laughs> Hi everybody and welcome back to Coded Dave. This is the third video in this series dedicated to the Azure Pipelines trigger. If you haven't seen it already, I encourage you to take a look at the other two videos. You can find the link up here and in the video description. Today instead, we're gonna take a look at how we can trigger a pipeline as a result of a completion of another pipeline. And we're doing so using the pipeline trigger. I know the name is not the most you know, fanciful, but it does what it means. Before we start, make sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. And if you want to learn about DevOps, especially with Azure DevOps and GitHub, just click on the subscribe button below right now and turn on the notifications so you will not miss any new video. Also, it's finally time to discover who won the giveaway I've launched a couple of weeks ago. And the winner is Matthew Pico. Congrats, Matthew. I'll be contacting you soon to arrange the shipping. And thanks to everyone else who participated, you guys are awesome. All right, let's talk about the pipeline trigger. This time I'll start first with the YAML pipelines, and then I'll talk about the classic pipelines, the one from the UI. And stay with me until the end, because the way you use the two different ones is pretty different. Here we are in Azure Pipelines, and I have already some pipelines set up. I have here this pipelines trigger source, which in this example will be the triggering pipeline. And I also have this pipeline trigger dependent, which is the pipeline that we will want to be triggered when the pipeline trigger source pipeline finishes. If we take a look at the two pipelines, we see that the pipeline trigger source, and remember this name because it will be important in a second, does nothing specific. You can do all your normal CI stuff in here, test, build, etc. And this is because all the magic happens in the dependent pipeline. We are not going to use the trigger portion of the YAML, but we are going to use something that is called resource. As you can see, we have the resource keyword and inside it, we have this pipelines keyword. In this case, we only have one pipeline defined as resource, but I can have multiple ones. As you can see here, this my source pipeline name is just the ID you assign to this resource. And it's useful to refer to this resource later in the YAML. The important part here is this one. If you remember, I said before, remember the pipeline name because it will be important in a second. And this is why you need to specify the full name of the source pipeline here. And this is what will make the connection. And once you've done that, you can add the trigger and you can also filter by branches. If the triggering pipeline is in another Azure DevOps project, you must add here the project keyword together with the other project name. But in this case, my source pipeline is in the same project, so I don't need this. Another important thing to notice is that if the triggering pipeline and the trigger pipeline, so the source and the dependent, if you will, are in the same repo, then both of those will run using the same commit when one triggers the other. However, if the two pipelines are in different repos, then the triggered pipeline will use the latest version of the code from its own default branch. You can also use some of the metadata from the triggering pipeline in the triggered one. As you can see on screen, those include the source project name, the pipeline name, information about the source code and state, like branch and commit and more. For example, let's add here the name of the calling pipeline in the script. And you do so using the normal syntax for the expressions, which is with dollar and the multiple parentheses. If we take a closer look at this, we have the resources keyword, the pipeline keyword, and then this is the ID we've assigned. And finally, the property you want to access. Let's save this. Let's go back to the pipelines dashboard and let's trigger the pipeline source after it runs. And as you can see, as soon as it finishes, it, it's triggered the dependent pipeline. Now it's finished. And if we go inside, we can check in the log and we will see in the script that now we have the name of the triggering pipeline. And if we go back to the pipeline, we also see that it's been automatically triggered from the other pipeline. Last thing I wanna mention is that you can consume artifacts from a triggering pipeline using the download task. All you have to do is adding a download task like this one. In here, you just have to specify the name of the pipeline you want to download from, 
and in this case is the same alias as we said before and the name of the artifact that your source pipeline is publishing and that's all now if you have a step after this download step you will be able to access your artifact and all the content in it super super easy this is basically it for the yaml pipelines one quick note though previously you may have navigated to the classic editor for your yaml pipeline and configure build completion trigger in the ui and while that model still works, it's no longer recommended. The recommended approach is in fact to specify pipelines triggers directly within the YAML file as we've seen. And the reason for it is that build completion triggers as defined in the classic editor have uh, some limitations which have now been addressed in the YAML pipeline triggers. Let's talk about the classic pipelines now. But before we do so, Hit the like button below if you think this video provides value to you or you find it insightful. In the classic editor, the pipeline's triggers are called build completion trigger and you can select any other pipeline in the same project to be the triggering one. Let's see this in action. As before, I have a source pipeline and a triggered pipeline. The source or triggering pipeline is just a normal one so I'm not gonna spend time on it. But let's take a look at the dependent pipeline. What we can do in here is going to the trigger part. Here you have this build completion section with the add button. So if we click on add, all we have to do is selecting the trigger in build. In this case, will be classic pipeline trigger. And as before, if we are using the same repo, we can also have a branch filter over here. Remember that in some cases, a single multi-job build could meet your needs. However, a build completion trigger is useful if your requirements include different configuration settings, uh, options, or a different team to own the dependent pipeline. Again, let's save and see this in action. Let's go back to our pipelines and let's trigger the classic pipeline trigger source. Run pipeline. Here we have the source pipeline running and as soon as it's done, it should trigger the dependent pipeline. And in fact, as soon as it finishes, we now have the dependent pipeline that is being queued and now is running. As for the YAML pipelines, also in the classic pipelines, you can download artifacts from the triggering build. So let's edit this pipeline. And to do this, you just add from here the download build artifact step. You of course need to set some parameters. And for this, you want to specify a specific build for which you have to select the project and in that project, the build pipeline, classic pipeline trigger source. You also want to select this option. When appropriate, download artifact from the triggering build. This makes sure to download the artifacts only when the build is being triggered by that build and not every time. And of course, as last thing, you need to select the artifact name. And this ensures you that if the source build has multiple artifacts, then you'll pick the right one for you. And again, that's it. It's pretty easy as well. All right, that's it for today. Let me know in the comment section below if you use already the pipeline triggers, or if not, if you plan to use it and for what. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Hit the like button below, subscribe if you haven't already, and I see you in the next video here at Coder Dave. Oh.